Well, hey guys, it's finally time to show you guys a walkthrough of my very first bass boat. But before we do, I gotta get a little bit into character. Check out this old school jersey. My good friend and Bass Club captain Robin Rogers hooked me up with this awesome champion shirt. He used to drive a champion. He gave me this cool shirt, another cool shirt, and a really sick vintage jacket that I'll be wearing in videos coming up. We were actually looking at an older boat uh, that was also a little bit cheaper. That deal fell through that he wanted to keep the boat in his family and we just said if a unicorn pops up, then we'll go after it. But if it doesn't, then we're not really gonna worry about a boat right now. A local guide, David Murdaugh, huge shout out, was selling this champion that he was guiding out of for the past year. Best friends with the original owner. I was kind of showing everybody, everybody said three things. Great boat, great motor, trustworthy guy. This is a great deal and would be a great first boat for you. And so here it is. Here's my 2004 Champion 206. One last thing before we jump into the walkthroughs. If, if you don't know anything about Champion like I didn't, they actually ended up being bought out by Ranger, but the Champion hull is very sought after. Everyone says this is one of the smoothest riding boats in rough water. The guys from Tactical Bassin uh, drive Champions as well. Fun story, the first time I was putting gas in it, uh, I had my hair back in a bun under a hat and a guy walks up and goes, excuse me, and I turned around, he said, Oh, my bad. I saw the champion. I saw the hair. I thought you might be one of the guys from Tactical Bassin. Like I said, guys, this is my very first bass boat, and I'm so thankful and excited to have it. Let's go through the whole boat, show you guys everything that I know about it. And if you got some cool tips and tricks, leave them down in the comments. I appreciate you. We're going to start at the front of the boat and work our way back. The first thing you'll notice is the Minn Kota Fortrex trolling motor. This is a 36 volt and I've been out once. It pulls the boat really well. It's easy to control. Obviously the Fortrex doesn't have spot lock. That's something we want to upgrade in the future. But as far as what came with the boat, like I'm excited to have a really nice trolling motor like the Fortrex. Also up front, I have a Hummingbird Gen 2. Helix 10. Apparently the front is hooked up for 2D down scan and side imaging. I haven't got to play with that a whole lot yet, uh, but that's all stuff that I really need to learn. I don't have forward facing sonar yet. That'll probably be one of the first big upgrades that we do want to do to the boat. So real quick, uh, behind the Helix uh, are my trim and nav light switches. They're out of the way, they're easy to get to. And there's plenty of room up here if we wanted to add another graft with forward facing sonar. I keep saying graft, but y'all know I mean graft. One thing that we have to talk about too is just how much room is on the front of this Champion 206. Um, I hear the 203 is a, a better riding boat, but that the 206 has the bigger deck. And honestly, I love having this much space, not just for me and my rods, but if I have a co-angler or my wife or you know a cameraman on here with me, uh, they can jump up here um, and be part of the action. I mean, this thing is huge. Also, another little thing I didn't point out is these upgraded, like these rod buckles. They're the really nice uh, straps. They're not those little flimsy straps. And that, you know, it's just small things like that that mean a lot. Another cool thing about this Champion is that it came with a locker bar installed. Like that was something Champion did from the factory. And so just a little bit extra security uh, when I'm away from my boat. The lighting outside today is really weird, but we're going to start with the rod locker and kind of show you guys the space and what I have in there. All right, y'all, the storage starts way back here. You got like room for some extra stuff. Um, I've got an extra light in there. And then you've got these awesome little brackets that help keep your rods separated. I've got 10 rods in there. Eight of them are combos. Two of them are just uh, rods without reels on them. And you've got these little uh, slots in the front as little channels. Uh, I've got a seven and a half rod in here easily. It would fit up to an eight with no problem. I know on a lot of these boat tours, guys have like 20, 30 rods in there and you can take some of this stuff out and make more room. But um, this is these are all the rods that I have um, that aren't broken and so, I, as I get more stuff, I have plenty of room to grow, but for now, I have everything I need in the rod locker. What do you guys think? Do y'all recommend taking out these little organizational things or leaving them in? Um, I know that you really wanna have these rod socks on your rods uh, going up in there so that you don't break your eyes off. I know that's super important, but as far as the little organizational thing goes, you, you guys recommend taking that out or leaving it in? All right, here we go. Center storage, 
plenty of room considering I don't really have a whole lot of stuff yet. All right, there we go. I had to fix the exposure, but you can see like this is almost all of my stuff. Um, it's just a big open space. And so I've got my Plano boxes at the bottom. I'm going to get more, but is there a good way to put like some dividers in here uh, to kind of help them stand up straight or, or, or something? There's got to be a better way. Because right now, just kind of digging through, I know is not going to be the play, especially when we're fishing tournaments and we're in a hurry. And moving on to the right side, this is in front of the driver's seat. Uh, it's just an extra storage area. Right now I've got my life jackets, my wife's life jacket, a throwable, my extra stuff. I actually went and picked up a new scale and new coal tags after uh, winning money in the district fish off. Uh, right now I'm still using my hog trough from when I was a kayak angler, but uh, my net, my locker bar, and my um, big light for the back are all in here. I know a lot of people use this as extra tackle storage. So I'm thinking I can do hard baits in here in my Plano boxes and then have some way to organize all of my soft plastics um, over here. But I also have this spot, which is a cooler. Um, also, some champions don't have this uh, extra spot. I love it because it's a step up to the front, um, but it's a cooler. Let me go ahead and adjust the light here. It's a cooler, but David, the guy I bought the boat from, was telling me that he just used this as storage, and I'll show you why in a minute. But right now I've got my rope and whistle in there and then a trash bag. Um, but I definitely plan on putting like on tournament day, my scale, my pliers, because I don't have a good spot to put those. That's the question I'll ask you later. Um, just some extra storage in this little spot up front, but I'm going to get out here and get wide and show you guys all of the storage that we have up front. Like I said, if you guys have any recommendations for how to make this um, as efficient as possible, please let me know. All right, guys, we're here in the passenger seat. And one thing that I'm excited about is that it is a dual console. And everybody says that my wife is gonna love this boat because it's one of the smoothest riding holes ever, but also that dual console is gonna keep her a little bit more comfortable. And it, it was pretty chilly out there on our first ride, but uh, I told her, imagine not having that console and just the wind blasting you. And she was very thankful for it. Uh, we have a great ramp right here with this buckle uh, for any co-angler um, to strap their rods in. I'll put some B-roll over right now. Of, uh, there's actually a spot underneath for uh, your rod butts to sit. You have a cup holder and everything like that, along with uh, two grab handles uh, in case we go too fast. And we have this awesome console, which has a radio in it. And there are two speakers on the boat. I was told that this does work. It's just not currently plugged up. It also has a remote. I mean. It's, it's kind of old and dated, but it, it's cool. I'm gonna leave that in here for, you know, down the line, the next person, but there's plenty of room in here for your keys, your phone, the Glock, whatever you wanna put in there to keep it safe and dry. All right, jumping over the driver's seat of the boat. This is, you know, the cool part where I feel like I'm driving a race car. The first thing is it has a hot foot, which allows you to keep both hands on the wheel while navigating. That's something that I definitely wanted in a bass boat. All of the instruments on the dash are original to the boat, including the Lowrance flasher in the middle, which still comes on. That obviously is antique technology now, but just to keep the tradition of the boat, especially, you know, in the future, if it comes to resale value, uh, I'm going to leave all of that original. We also have another Humminbird Helix 10 back here, which obviously will be used for mapping. I've got a map card on the way, which is going to be crucial in navigating Santee Cooper Lakes. And I love that all of my switches are toggle switches and the fuse panel is right up underneath me. Um, I'm, I'm told that it's super easy to change out the switches if they go bad and the fuses are easy to access. So if something does go wrong on the water, um, it's a quick fix. One of the very few things that need to be fixed on the boat, however, is uh, the live well timer. My live wells uh, work, they fill up and they pump out, uh, but the timer is on a little dial um, and apparently that box doesn't work. And so it's about a hundred dollar fix. I got a couple guys looking for me. Once we find that, that'll be fixed, no problem. All right, one thing real quick before I move to the back of the boat is we have this center seat that folds down and you've got your cup holders, uh, but that part actually broke off. It seems like it seems like it'll be a pretty simple fix. Um, I've never done anything like that before, but it seems like it's it's not a big deal. Okay, the biggest part of the back of the boat is that it's powered by this Yamaha VMAX 250, and I would have been happy with a 200, a 225. Really, I'd have been happy with anything on my first bass boat, but to have a 250 and know I can get across the lake, across the river, 
um, really as fast as I need to. I'm told this boat will go 70. I've had it to 65. But yeah, stay tuned. The more I get comfortable and the more I learn how to drive it, we'll, we'll see how fast this thing will go. But also one of the reasons in buying this boat is because it's a reliable boat and hull, but also because I'm told this is a very reliable motor if you take care of it. All right, we'll start with these two round things. Uh, this gives you access to your fuel lines. This is some kind of weird base where the seat goes in and I have the seats. I'm told they don't fit in perfectly, but with like a cloth over it, it it's fine. That's not something that I'll use very often anyway, um, but that's what that big plate is right there. And then this I think is the original Lowrance puck. That doesn't work, but they didn't want to bring pull it out because they didn't want to leave any holes in the carpet. So I'm just going to leave that there as well. These first two boxes are the live wells and you'll see that they are pretty massive. I can't really get a good shot of the live wells because it's so dark in there. Um, but they're pretty huge and there's a center divider uh, that comes out as well I'll leave that in just for my and my co-angler's sake, but um, yeah, pretty big live wells All right behind the driver. I was telling told you guys I'll tell you later. This is actually what David used as his cooler. There's a plug in there um, as well It's smaller, but it's big enough uh, for a day on the water That'll fit so many bags of combos and then behind there is more storage right now. I've got an anchor um, I've got my fire extinguisher, my microfiber cloth, bass boat saver, and spray that I've been using to clean the boat uh, and my electronics. So these are the two compartments that are behind the driver's seat. And then behind the passenger seat, we have one compartment. Um, and right now that's got the Minn Kota upgraded battery charger in there. And I'll show you why that's important in a second. But we also have a little bit more storage space here for a co-angler. Sorry, co-anglers. I promise you can put your stuff uh, wherever you want. And the reason that charger is so important is because uh, we actually have the trolling motor on a 36 volt system. So there's four batteries back here um, and my oil reservoir, which I need to make sure is filled up before we go out again. Um, but yeah, there you go. There's the back compartment. The outside of the boat is in really, really great shape. There's a few things that uh, need to be changed, like the original owner, Jim Butler, uh, who I'm told took really good care of this boat too. No offense, Jim, but we got to get his name taken off there, put Teed Stone down the side. It's not the original trailer to the boat, but the trailer's really nice and really beefy. And so far I'm getting the hang of backing it up and, and actually trailering it with my truck. The original kill guard's coming off. Um, David said we might need to add a roller back here on the trailer to prevent that, but he actually gave me a brand new one in box to replace this one um, when we get a chance. And lastly, on the exterior of the boat, no offense, I just really didn't want red. And so this awesome, sparkly blue and white pattern looks awesome uh so i'm in love with everything about this boat guys i can't believe i finally after so long have my very own bass boat and to have one as nice as this champion one of my favorite youtubers to watch is justin royal and i remember one of his videos saying he felt like his content creating career really started to take off when he got his own boat because it opened so many doors and you guys know my goal, getting better at tournament fishing, traveling, and fishing more water. And now all of that is slowly becoming more and more accessible. So I'm so pumped about where this content can go. So thank you to everyone in the process. David for giving me a good deal on the boat. All my homies for telling me that it's a really great deal. My wife for saying, hey, this boat might be a unicorn. We should probably get it. So if you're new here and this is the first video of mine that you've clicked on, I'd ask you, Hit subscribe, man. It would mean a lot to me if you came along this journey with me as I become a better bass angler. And I can honestly tell you that the best is yet to come here on this channel. Next video coming your way should be a tournament video I'm shooting with Rob this weekend. But trust me, we're going to get the champion out very, very soon. In fact, in uh, a little bit over a week, uh, we'll be fishing our first tournament out of it. But until then, guys, I'll see you very soon on the next one.